Hello, Stone Hill fans, and welcome to the second week of Skyhawk Update. I'm Craig Guerrero, joined by fellow anchorman Brendan Murray. The fall seasons are well underway, and certain programs were making strides. Brendan. That's right, Craig. Stone Hill combined for a grand total of six wins this week. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's take a look at exactly what happened. We're going to start it off with men's soccer, and they're coming off a big win at home against Concordia, and now they're trying to carry that momentum as they take a swing at their biggest rival, Bentley, on their home turf. The match took place on Tuesday with Stonehill in their home purple uniforms and Bentley in the whites. Stonehill got down 1-0 early in the game. They play a ball in the box here. Bentley clears it, but Tyler Bronger gets here on the end of it. A high arcing goal over the keeper's head. He ties it at one for the Skyhawks, and he'd put them up by two. But later, off a penalty kick, Adam Quella can't get enough of it. It squeaks in for a Brennan DaCosta goal, and that ties it at one. Now, just 10 minutes later, off a Bentley free kick, Quella with the initial save, but Joe Avery puts it in for Bentley, and they would go on to win by a final score of 3-2. Now over to W.B. Mason Stadium, where the Lady Skyhawk field hockey team took on St. Anselm's. It's their first in-conference game, and this is off a corner. The assist by Jessica Lorendo and Devin Ingersoll puts it in for the Skyhawks, and they're in an early 1-0 lead. In the second half, now Brittany Ford cleans it up in front of the net and puts it in for Stonehill. That's her second goal of the season, and Stonehill would go on to win by a final score of 3-1. Back over to men's soccer now for another home contest, this time against non-conference Mercy College. The first half was a great defense a battle between these two sides and here's Adam Quella going to the ground on the great one-on-one -on -one save against the Mercy striker. Just two minutes left in the game there. Stonehill down one when Kevin Gilmartin off the free kick. A high arcing shot beats the keeper and he sends it to overtime tied at one in overtime. Stonehill tries to clear it but Ryan Flynn gets on the other end of it for Mercy and buries it and he ends the game in overtime with a sudden death goal. Mercy wins by a final score of two to one. Staying with soccer, but now over to the women's team who open their in-conference play at home against Pace. An early scoring chance from the Skyhawks is kept out of net by Pace keeper Courtney Hagen, but she couldn't keep the Skyhawks out of net for long. This is Caroline Stone dribbling into the box. Some fancy footwork and she gets past two Mercy defenders and then squeaks it in as Hagen can't get enough. She'd put the Skyhawks up one to nothing. The Skyhawks would score one more goal late in the half and go on to win by a final score of 2-0. The Skyhawk football team opened conference play last weekend after a loss to nationally ranked Bloomsburg in their season opener. The Owls of Southern Connecticut State University rolled into W.B. Mason Stadium with history on their side, holding a perfect 15-0 record over Stonehill. Could the Skyhawks reverse the curse? They certainly believed so. Men in purple pumped out coming out of the tunnel for Saturday afternoon's contest. We jump right to the first quarter. Score tied 0-0. Brennan Lippincott looking down the sideline for Jerome Cunningham. Sterry Codrington knocks it down. Two plays later, that same secondary. They were good. James Hodges picks off Lippincott. 23 yards on the return down to the SCSU 36-yard line. Second quarter, Jesse Hunt getting his signals from the sideline. Hunt going to drop back to pass, looking for his wide receiver on the slant route, but picked off by Aaron Brockenberry. Defenses were making a living in the first half. Stonehill getting the benefit now of a little, an active coach in the stands. Words of encouragement from Nicky Nobbs Toyez, and it might have had something to do with it. Under two minutes in the first half, Timmy Bennett intercepts Lippincott for the third time in the half. He's going to take it 22 yards on the return and set Stonehill up with excellent field position. That leads to this, a Steve Grishwa, 37-yard field goal with the clock winding down. Put Stonehill up by a score of 3 to nothing going into the half. We go on to the next frame, early in the third. Second and nine. Lots of history to be made on this day. It doesn't look like a flashy highlight, but Logan Meyer's going to hit John Gomes for 14 yards. That's his 126th career reception, a new Stonehill record. Into the fourth quarter now, more John Gomes, 39 yards down the sideline. Stonehill leading three to nothing, but that would set up this excellent touchdown pass. It's a little fade route, and who else but John Gomes? He's going to catch this one, pad the stats a little bit. Stonehill leads 10 to nothing, and from there, the Skyhawks as a team would go on to make history, beating Southern Connecticut by a final score of 13 to nothing, the first time ever in 16 meetings. The number 25 Stonehill men's and number 23 women's cross country teams open their seasons with convincing victories at the Shockley Invitational hosted by St. Anselm's College on Saturday afternoon. 
Freshman Nick Kickpatrick won his first collegiate race with a time of 27 minutes and 20 seconds over the five-mile run. The Stonehill men seized seven out of the top ten spots, winning the race easily with 19 points overall to Merrimack's 51. Men win by a landslide. The Stonehill women also swept the top three spots with junior Emily Regan leading the way for the Skyhawks, running a time of 19 minutes and 17 seconds for 30.1 miles. Stonehill's 18 points was good enough for an easy win over runner-up St. Anselm's College. The Stonehill volleyball team opened its home season Tuesday night against Assumption University, and players and fans came decked out in orange in honor of Henry Thevenin and to raise awareness for leukemia and lymphoma. Let's see how they did. The Skyhawk volleyball team trying to rebound after a tough opening weekend in Michigan. And Emily Iverson trying to do just that as she sets up Kirsten Arvidsson for the kill early in the match. Stonehill took a hot start and wouldn't stop. This is Emily Iverson again, this time setting up Megan Lee, who led the team with 10 kills. And who else but Iverson again, this time with a diving stab to keep the point alive for Stonehill. They'd win in straight sets and send Ace and the fans home happy. Well, that's all we have for you in this edition of Skyhawk Update. Tune in next week to catch up on all your Skyhawk scores, highlights, news, and more. For Craig Grado and Brendan Murray and the rest of the team here at SCSN, thanks for watching and good night.